first in a series of advanced jiu-jitsu videos from the World Jiu-Jitsu Federation syllabus devised by Robert Clark. This particular tape deals with the transitional development of a single technique into a training module. This form of combination modular training is included in the World Jiu-Jitsu Federation syllabus to encourage the individual progression of the exponent. The first series of techniques demonstrates double combinations and will initially be shown at normal speed from varying angles. Each technique will then be analyzed in slow motion when important points to remember will be highlighted. All demonstrations feature World Jiu-Jitsu Federation founder Robert Clark and his personal assistant Alan Campbell. Half shoulder into shoulder and wrist lock. Half shoulder into back hock with hold down. Half shoulder into leg throw with lock. Half shoulder into attacking sweeping loin. Half shoulder into spring hip throw. Yes. Half shoulder into head, hip and knee. Half shoulder into body drop. Half shoulder into a dropping version of a body drop. Half shoulder into a reverse body drop. Half shoulder into a rear throw. Half shoulder into an outer wind. Half shoulder into a hip throw. These 12 double combinations will now be analyzed in slow motion. Technique number one. This is the half shoulder into wrist lock. Important points to remember are the position of the defender's right foot and the protective block against further attack. In this case, the left punch. Technique number two. This is the half shoulder into a back hock with hold down.
Note the position of the defender's left leg prior to the throw. Using your heel, strike to the throat and drop into a crossover arm lock. Note the protective position of the left arm. Technique number three. This is the half shoulder into leg throw with lock. After completing the first part of the technique, note the attacking block to the throat, preventing a possible headbutt. The technique is completed with a figure four leg lock. Technique number four. This is a half shoulder into an attacking sweeping loin. Following the attack with the knee, pay attention to the defender's left foot as accurate positioning will accelerate the speed of the throw. The hold down is a double shoulder and head pin. Technique number five. This is a half shoulder into a spring hip. Yes. The important point here is the position of the defender's right leg which should be placed on or under the attacker's right knee. Technique number six. This is a half shoulder into a head, hip and knee. Key points to remember are the defender's clenched fist when striking to the attacker's neck and the kneeling position prior to the throw. Technique number seven. This is a half shoulder into a body drop. Prior to the body drop, the defender's knee should be slightly bent and the snapping motion attained when the leg is straightened against the attacker's knee combined with the pull on the upper arm, completes the throw.
technique number eight. This is a half shoulder into a dropping version of a body drop. The important point is the position of the defender's kneeling left leg and the placing of the hand under the arm prior to the straightening of the right leg. This is a particularly heavy throw and is completed by a headlock and choke. Technique number nine. This is a half shoulder into a dropping version of a reverse body drop. This is a reversal of the previous technique, but the defender steps forward, kneels and attacks the back of the opponent's legs, forcing him backwards. Be aware of any further attack from the ground. Technique number 10. This is a half shoulder into a rear throw. Note the position of the defender's two feet outside the attacker. The pulling down motion and the placing of the palm in the opponent's midriff. The hold down is a crossover head and figure four lock. Technique number 11. This is a half shoulder into an outer wind. Key points are the palm heel strike to the jaw, the winding motion of the throw and the head and shoulder pin. Technique number 12. This is a half shoulder into hip throw. The main point to consider during a hip throw is to make sure that both the defender's legs are close and slightly bent and placed inside the attacker's feet prior to the throw. After you have mastered the double combinations, you will now be ready to move on to the triple and quadruple techniques. These techniques are so designed to enable the instructor to gain more flexibility and fluency and to encourage individual improvisation during training. The following combinations once again will be demonstrated at normal speed and from various angles and then analysed in slow motion. Half shoulder into wrist lock into reclining leg throw. Half shoulder into wrist lock into front scissors throw.
half shoulder into wrist lock into crab claw scissors throw. Half shoulder into wrist lock into back hock throw. Half shoulder into wrist lock into scissors and naked choke hold. Half shoulder into outer wind into rice bale throw. Half shoulder into outer wind into back hock throw. Half shoulder into wrist lock into arm and shoulder throw. Technique number one, half shoulder into wrist lock into reclining leg throw. In between moving from the half shoulder into the wrist lock, Kick to the attacker's right knee. Step in and kneel. Strike with the elbow to the lower rib and back fist to the side of the face. Technique number two, half shoulder into wrist lock into front scissors throw. Points to remember here are following the wrist lock the position of the hands on the floor and the leg lock. Technique number three, half shoulder into wrist lock into crab claw scissors. This move is a reversal of the front scissors throw. But this time only one hand is placed on the floor. Following the throw, 
The right leg is transferred over the back of the attacker's neck and under the arm, effecting a restraining hold. Technique number four, half shoulder into wrist lock into back hock. Important points in this combination are the wrist and elbow lock, the position of the defender's left leg, the strike to the throat and the lift and kneel before applying the arm lock. Technique number five, half shoulder into wrist lock into scissors and naked choke hold. Attention must be given to the changing of grips, the elbow strikes and the coordination of the scissor and neck choke. Technique number six, half shoulder into outer wind into rice bale. Key points to study are the palm heel strike to the chin, the winding movement, the rice bale throw with reverse turn which creates intense pressure against the attacker's spine. Technique number seven, half shoulder into outer wind into back hock. Pay special attention during this technique to the pivoting movement after the outer wind throw, the blocking of the punch and the step over arm lock. Technique number eight, half shoulder into wrist lock into arm and shoulder throw. Remember the following key points. The pressure extended against the attacker's shoulder, elbow and wrist 
and the position and movement of the defender's feet, legs and knee. World Jiu-Jitsu Federation advanced Jiu-Jitsu techniques are currently in two parts. The following moves are from the advanced Jiu-Jitsu video part two, which is available from World Jiu-Jitsu Federation headquarters. This is the second in the Masterclass series by Robert Clark. The following techniques will be of particular interest to advanced Jiu-Jitsu students who are studying combination locking and restraint. The individual style of these moves are special to Bob Clark and are taught in this modular system to enable the student to build up his repertoire of advanced techniques. As this is an instructional tape, all the moves will be shown at variable speed and from different angles. Close attention should be paid to the following points. Stance, posture, footwork, flexibility and style. We hope that you have enjoyed this video. A comprehensive range of books and further videos by Robert Clark are available from World Jiu Jitsu Federation headquarters. Barlow's Lane, Fazakali, Liverpool L9 9EH, England. Our telephone number for personal inquiries is 051 523 9611. Access and Visa cards are welcome.